Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. This next episode has our favorite Hollywood dude, Manny Pacheco. And of course, Manny. I'm always, always thrilled to be with my partner, John Coleman. <laughs> well, I'm thrilled to be with Manny. Ah. Well, I'm glad Art didn't forget you. <laughs> that would have been sad. He almost did. Right. Well, Manny, you look good. Well, thank you. I feel good. Uh, Manny, uh, the subject for today, I'm going to start with Tracy and Hepburn, mm. the classic, classic Hollywood romance. But there have been a bunch of them. Yeah, a number of them. Ho yeah, well, you think of Tracy and Hepburn, you think of um, you think of a, a really tender, wonderful love affair, uh, and you you kind of forget the fact that that Tracy was married and he was a Catholic <laughs> and he wasn't going to get divorced and he had a son who was deaf, John Tracy. A clinic was named after him, and that caused Tracy to just go bonkers and drink a lot. And and until he met Catherine Hepburn, who basically shepherded him. Uh, through all of his rough patches, uh, it is really a love story for the ages. Yeah, I, I, and actually, and uh, the, the interesting thing about them, as uh, opposed to a few others that we may mention along the way, but why they're so uh, uh, exciting as a couple uh, and so iconic is that they had an on-screen yeah. uh, uh, relationship as well as the private, uh, where there are many couples that we could probably talk about but who weren't necessarily on screen the way they were in private life as well. Yeah, that chemistry was just mm -hmm. amazing. And they were, they had wonderful chemistry, even if they were at odds uh, in, in really uh, serious dramas like Keeper of the Flame or in comedies like Adam's Rib. Uh, they, they, they just had, you could tell that it was just a real joy working together. Uh, they, they, they knew they could almost finish each other's lines uh, as when you watch Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, you just know that they are so comfortable in front of the camera together. And you can only imagine what it was like uh, behind the scenes. But it, it lasted until uh, Tracy's death in 1967. And then Catherine Hepburn wouldn't speak openly about it for another 25 years. And then when she finally did, she poured her heart out. So, yeah, yeah. But they weren't the only ones. No. Uh, there There's was so another. There was another one that had amazing screen chemistry. They didn't make as many movies, you know. Tracy and Hepburn made nine movies together, but Humphrey Bogart and Lauren McCall, mm. the minute right. they met, you could feel the sparks. Uh, Bogie and To Have and Have Not could barely contain his enthusiasm. He smiles every time she opens her mouth. There is just he, he fell in love in front of the camera. And um, she uh, was way younger. I mean, she was 19. He was 47. And he was also married uh, and, and in a very bad relationship. Uh, in, in fact, his wife at the time was very, um, she was very physically uh, just a, a bad person. She could, she could be prone to fighting and, and, and yelling and screaming and just making a scene in front of uh, whoever happened to be in the neighborhood. So... Uh, they were called the battling Bogarts, <laughs> but then he meets, you know, the, his his calm um, soulmate in in uh, Lauren Bacall. And interestingly, after after Bogey died, eventually Lauren Bacall would marry Jason Robards. So <laughs> there you go. She married a, a, a two very um, very distinguished actors, and, but the chemistry of Bogey and Bacall. I mean. Songs have been written about it. There's a song by Bertie Higgins called Key Largo that you sure you feel you feel the, the love between Bogey and Bacall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any modern versions of uh, uh, on screen lovers well, and off screen lovers like that? Hmm. Well, I think the most famous right now, I mean, if you're talking about, you know, one that might last a decade or two or three, uh, I mean, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Hmm. Uh, again, lots of chemistry on screen. Uh, they are still fiercely in love to this day. Yeah, I mean they they just are a very very happy couple. I mean, yeah. and, and and they and they both did not 
It did not go through the A Star is Born syndrome. They've both been very successful in their careers, mm -hmm. albeit they very rarely cross. I think they've made two or three films together, but uh, they're very comfortable being apart and, and doing their own thing. Sure. Uh, they've never been married, mm. but they oh, have that's lived right. together. Yeah. I mean, but they've lived together for, for decades. Well, I guess they're I can think of another one, <laughs> another one that uh, I don't think they've had that much on screen together. I think they had one or two is uh, Woodward and Newman. Oh, yes. Oh, Joe, oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Was there a happier couple? Yeah. And I mean, to the day till the day that Paul Newman died, I think he professed his love for Joanne Woodward every single day. And, you know, there was a time when he could have been kind of petty or petulant uh, when Joanne Woodward won her Oscar for Three Faces of Eve in 1958. They'd been married just a couple of years and it was going to be a couple of decades before Newman would earn his Oscar. But he, I think, I think the buttons on his uh, shirt were popping off when she won her Oscar. I, I, that's a, you know, that's a great call, uh, Art. Really great call because they were really a magical couple. They did make some films together too, actually. Uh, I think they made three films together and um, about as good as it gets, yeah. about as good yeah. as it gets. There's another one I want to mention if you want to go back in time, and you wouldn't know this one, so this is going to be a forgotten story for you. Um, if you remember the movie Liable Lady, it was a four-star cast. It was William Powell and Myrna Loy, and it was Spencer Tracy and Gene Harlow. And frequently, I mean, in 14 films, um, William Powell and Myrna Loy were paired off. They were yeah. act absolutely the magic screen couple, but they were never in love. Who, who William Powell actually pined for. He, he had been married to Carol Lombard, or at least dated her. But the, the, the woman of his life was Jean Harlow. And they were dating, and then she tragically died just a couple of years later. And I got to tell you, William Powell at the funeral was inconsolable. It really was about as sad a story as it can get. And his friends, and he had many, Clark Gable, Spencer Tracy, and particularly his good pal, Myrna Loy, came to his aid to, uh, to, to shepherd him through his grief. It's a, it's a remarkable story, and people just don't know how much in love William Powell was with, uh, with Gene Harlow. Hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd never heard of that pairing before. Yeah. Right. And, it's, and, they, and they made a number of movies. They made Wife versus Secretary, Liable Lady. So, I yeah. mean, they didn't make as many movies as he did with Myrna Loy. I mean, I think the audience would, had hoped that the two would pair together, but it, it didn't happen. Uh, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, and then there was Clark Gable and Carol Lombard as, as mm. well, and that was a tragic story. I mean, Carol Lombard lost her life, you know, selling war bonds on, on, on her way home, and, and her... Um, and her plane crashes into a mountain. Not only did she die, her mother died. And and I think Clark Gable was just never the same after 1942. Right. I mean, he was a shell of a man. He yeah. instantly uh, entered the service in honor of his wife, and, and he served during World War II. And, and another tragic, uh, wonderful relationship. I mean, we can we can speak about Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Obviously, oh, that's an easy sure. one. That's low-hanging fruit. Well, but it was the best known. Right, but she was married, you know, eight times. Right, I, a couple of times <laughs> I, to Burton. I believe that if she had stayed married to Mike Todd, the, the producer of uh, Around the World in 80 Days, mm. and I didn't Fisher. know that Burton could have taken him away from her. I, I'm, if there was one person bigger than Burton, it was Mike Todd. But tragically, he died in a plane crash. Right. Yeah, And uh, she was almost on that plane, but, you know, she frequently was ill. And in, one, in this particular case, she was ill, did not go, and then he dies in a plane crash. Yeah. Ends up marrying Eddie Fisher, who was just, you know, just a, a, a very, very passive individual. And he was no match for Richard Burton. So, and, and by the way, stole stole Eddie Fisher from Debbie Reynolds. So there's a, there's that story, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's maybe uh, end it on a, a bit of a happy note, although it's not truly a Hollywood couple. Uh, and I don't know whether they've actually ever appeared together, but uh, a long lasting relationship that's very well respected is... Uh, Kevin Bacon and uh, Cedric, Kyra Cedric. They've been well, called. very good call. That's a yes. Hollywood couple for sure, Art. No, you're right on the money. Yeah. Again, they're still in love. They still, uh, I think they may have made a movie together. Mm -hmm. I mean, their careers have been going on parallel paths, a nice trajectory. 
Yeah. Uh, I think Kara Sedgwick had, had a bigger career on television, right. although she did make some films, notably Hearts and Souls. Wonderful uh, uh, performance in Hearts and Souls with Robert Downey Jr. and, and Charles Grodin, Alfre Woodard. Uh, yeah, it, it, that's a good film, but mostly you, you see Kevin Bacon in Apollo uh, 13, and he's yeah. made just a number of films. I, I, I guess uh, that, that dance film that he did. Uh, and may, maybe <laughs> almost was, semi, but not quite, because... I, I don't know that she was ever that big a star, but Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson. Well, yes. I mean, she's a serviceable actress. I think she still works. Yeah. But I think she's more of a character actress. I mean, Tom Hanks is about... But it is a Hollywood romance that has endured. It has endured. They, it even survived COVID. Yeah. <laughs> in Australia. <laughs> right. They both had COVID in Australia. So, yeah, you know, you you have to look at couples and see the rough patches. And if they can survive those rough patches, you know it's true love. Mm. And and it seems like every one of them at one time or another might have had a little bit of a rough patch. But those are the those are the uh, couples that have endured. And yeah, you brought up some really good ones, Art. Boy, you're, you're knocking it out of the park. And also, <laughs> let's end on probably, it's not quite a couple, it's a threesome, but the three of us, we, oh. we, are, we are an enduring, <laughs> Love affair, I think. Uh, I, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think we should, uh, on that happy note, we should uh, say thank you much. But uh, uh, Hepburn and, and Tracy, uh, definitely, if, if you had to put in like a typical Hollywood relationship that is good to go, they would they would the probably be the poster child for that. Well, yeah, I I appreciate the fact that that you guys came up with a whole bunch of others that I had totally forgotten about. Real obvious names, yeah. just had not forgotten. Yeah, and yeah, I agree. I mean, you you think about them and you go, wow, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, as we leave as we leave this subject, I just want to say, we we mentioned a whole lot of really fabulous actors, and fabulous movies, but the one that still sticks in my mind is. Kurt Russell, Goldie Hawn, and Overboard. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just love that film. It's a marvelous film, and you know, long live their relationship. It, it's yeah. well deserved. Well, this is this is uh, we're talking about office romances, aren't we? Right. You <laughs> you meet somebody at work. Right. right. Now, granted, a, a a movie soundstage is not the same as an office. No. But for them, it was. Yeah, yeah, and for all of them, yeah, it, yeah. it was uh, it was quite good because honestly, there are le lots of romances that are like flings, and then they move to the next picture, and then the next fling. So right. the ones that endure, those are the special ones. Right. Well, thank you, Manny, once again for uh, taking us down uh, a path quite forgotten by many of us. Thank you. You bet. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.